What's up again guys? Yeah, it's me, your friendly neighborhood Dovahkiin, and welcome back to Let's Play Divinity Original Sin 2. And uh, before we begin, be sure to hit on the subscribe button for more great videos. Alright, since this episode is about a quest, you guessed it right. I'm gonna feature the narrative. But besides that, I'm gonna show the path which brings lesser bugs and more drama. Anyway, I'm certain you remember Gareth. I saved him in one of my past vids. This is all about him and how brutal his convictions will be tested. Anyway, back in the beginning of this act, he deboarded the ship to visit his parents at their family farm in Paradise Downs. But this first encounter happens in the meadows, just south of the waypoint. By the way, take note of the hidden smuggler's cache that I will unearth. What's this? I found something. How long has it been? Gareth looks to the limp body at his feet, then to you, sword raised. He isn't quite present, but lost in his own tangled thoughts. I knew I'd see him again. I wish it hadn't been like this. Indeed. Yet more than that. His name is Jonathan. He is my friend. Or was my friend. I led him here. I felt someone's gaze on me from almost the very moment I stepped foot on the coast. Lucian taught never to ignore augury, and sure enough, I saw the flash of white. I heard the sprigs snapping. Someone was watching, following. I came here and waited. The door swung open and it was him. A face I hadn't seen since I was called to the Seekers. He didn't say a word, just flashed the arrest warrant. Seems he didn't expect the punch. Now, now I must do as duty requires. Gareth raises his blade and tightens his grip, but falters. He cannot strike the final blow. Gareth's fingers open and close around his sword's hilt. His breathing slows and his face relaxes, yet his arm remains suspended. Gareth lowers his arm and straightens his spine. I know a safe place nearby, away from the creatures of the meadows. I'll take him there. He'll be untouched until he wakes. I pray he remembers what we were, and what we still might be, should Lucian will it. Okay, I went for the persuasion of him sparing his old BFF white magister Jonathan, so he took him to a safe place. Otherwise, if you went for ending the magister right then and there, the quest might bug and not close. By the way, to be on the same path without the persuasion, simply choose the last option. Save him in the swamps, blah blah blah. Now we follow him way east, to his family farm in Paradise Downs. And guess who are in those fresh graves? Gareth toils in monotony. Gareth freezes, then turns slowly towards you. His breaths are steady, his voice a monotone. I'm digging my murdered parents' graves. I'd ask that you show your respect. Gareth moves to continue his task, but his cadence falters. He pauses. Silence hangs, begging to be broken. No, of course you didn't. Godwoken, I've seen Seeker's blood seeping into the sand. I waded through corpses on the deck of the Lady Vengeance. But when the lifeless eyes looking back at you are your own mothers, I just didn't know. I didn't know what darkness lied beyond pain. Now, well... Now I do. Dallas's pets. Such helpful tools they are too. The abominations do the dirty work and the whites keep their robes clean. Convenient. They're still there, spreading their rancid smell through the house. Paladins came to clean up the mess. In the name of Lucian, they say, and they seem to believe it. Gareth shies away from you. His eyes pass over the half-filled graves and he takes a shuddering breath. I'm... I'm the one who's prayed. An endless litany. How many pleas does it take? 
How many tears do I have to shed? How much must I lose for the gods to listen? Gareth forcefully exhales and looks past you to the nearby house. You fear he might snap the shovel's handle in two. If you'd asked me yesterday, I'd have said they were the only ones left in the Divine Order worth their weight in salt. I have honored their devotion to our lost Lucian. Today, though, I don't know. The Paladins once fought the Black Ring at Lucian's command. The most courageous thing they could do now is turn their backs on the Order. I'm not holding my breath. I've got no use for platitudes. Not from some mediocre sorcerer, inexplicably chosen as the Seven Special Pet. You swear you hear Gareth's pulse, galloping faster than a saddled mount? You've never heard such a thing before, but you suspect Gareth's heart is close to tearing. If you want to help, then you find the craven white that ordered their slaughter. Anyone that stands between you and truth, no matter the flag they fly or creed they follow, make them bleed! His hand moves from his shovel to his sword. He wipes his forefinger along the blade, opening a bloody gash. He stares at the wound, then wipes the blood across his glistening forehead. Go to the house. Bring me the truth. This man is a loyalist of virtue, an exemplar of Lucian the Divine's ways. But I just gave him a slight push, and he takes the first step into the dark side by opening his eyes to the path of vengeance. And you just saw my choices. I simply avoided all the persuasion checks. And uh, like me, if you want his drama to linger, henceforth avoid all future persuasions. Just feed his need for revenge. On the two paladins at the door, don't bother persuading them to give you the farmhouse key which opens it. Just loot it from Paladin Willem's corpse. Yes, via force attack. And I'll tell you why later. Besides gaining 10.7k EXP for each Paladin, their deaths won't affect anything. So don't worry about the team of Paladins at the bridgehead. They ain't gonna go hostile on you or something. What's more, they were both voiced by the same actor. Somehow a guarantee that they are not essential to the game's script. Alright. Now we speed up his downward spiral into vengeful darkness by carrying out his bidding to get rid of the silent monks. 
then find out who ordered the murder of his parents. The corners of Gareth's mouth slant upwards, so too do his eyebrows. They still live. If you cannot see them slain, then I will. Then do it. Yanks open dresser drawers, then slams them shut. He opens books, then violently tosses them to the floor. Don't just stand there, look! Those... those atrocities don't act on their own. You know this as well as anyone. Someone had to give the order, and they'll have left some sign, some clue telling us who they are. They always do. The Whites are so proud of their cruelty, so satisfied with themselves. Gareth grunts and returns to his frenzied search. watches Gareth in sadness as he rummages through the house. I hate seeing him this way. I wish I could reach out to him. Tell him how proud we've always been. Tell him to be at peace. Nothing we didn't see coming. We always knew Gareth was fated for greatness. As a boy, he'd leap through the fields with wooden sword in hand, slaying imaginary demons, protecting us from whatever evil he would dream up. We also knew that good men make enemies. We knew evil would come, and so it did. Not as a demon or as a witch, but as a man Gareth once knew as a friend. Jonathan. He watched eagerly as those shambling husks descended. It seemed like a game to him. Like theatre. We would never blame Gareth. The righteous always pay a price. May the Seven will it. He will always be the hero we know him to be. We always want to believe in each other. It's what separates us from the Void. It's what makes our existence worthwhile. It's what we do next that defines us. We can respond with treachery. Or we can rise above. I trust that you will. Tell me you found something. What? Gareth takes quick, tiny paces. Back and forth, back and forth. This... This is what trust has brought me. Not peace, not friendship, not the Seven's graces, just death. I trusted in Lucian's mercy, in his protection. Yet all of it lies. Jonathan's lies. Lucian's lies. Your lies! You expect anger. Instead, Gareth smiles. A thin, frightening smile. You'll make amends then. You'll see Jonathan dead. And you'll bring me proof. Gareth holds his hands up to his face. Dirt clings to the underside of his nails. Grooves on his palm remain from his agitated digging. The self-inflicted wound on his finger is encrusted with blood. Do it, then. White Magister Jonathan. It was him all along. Well, it was actually my fault. The player's fault. Because if I didn't convince him to spare Jonathan back in the meadows, none of this would have happened, and Mr. and Mrs. Price would have been alive. So it wasn't just a slight push. I fully shoved him into the hole. But wait, there's an alternate scenario, which I'll discuss in a bit. Anyway, if you can't find the truth from the ghosts of the Prices, because you don't have spirit vision yet, 
the crucial piece of evidence is Jonathan's gloves, which I picked outside the house. Okay, on the alternate scenario, the infestation quest, which of course happens if he opted otherwise in the first encounter with Jonathan. Still in the family farm, you'll discover that the prices are cowering behind a wagon. They'll inform you that the farmhouse is infested with void woking and ask you to get rid of them. Now let's compare EXP gain for both quests. On the infestation quest, a whopping 56.35k. For this quest, burying the past, so far 35.1k. Remember I haven't whacked Jonathan yet, who's gonna be in the black pits. So the part 2 of this vid will be released once I feature that section of Reaper's Coast. Alright. But why did I opted for the progression of this quest instead of Infestation, when that one yields more EXP? Simple. Infestation has less drama and more bugs. Bugs as in void woken bugs and quest scripting bugs. Because burying the past doesn't close even though you've finished Infestation. The next flawless fight is against the leader of the void woken. Well, a weaker manifestation, the Restless Scarecrow. Dear child, you sacrifice too much. You need peace, rest. Come here and stay with me a while. A great pounding suddenly erupts in your chest. Your inner god roars and bellows, an incoherent, maddening cacophony. It is awful how he treats you. He asks so much and gives so little in return. I am the only one who cares. He will say otherwise. He always does. And in the end, he'll betray you. Don't play his game. Think of yourself. Rest here. The sun is golden. No one will bother you. This moment can last forever, if you let it. A sudden weariness washes over, bone deep and as irresistible as a strong current. The fatigue ebbs away, then surges back. Don't fight it. This is how it's supposed to be. Sleep now. When you wake, you will be in a new world. A beautiful world. I only wanted to give you rest, not pain. Now... I leave you to my children. They are many. They are impatient. They lack my gentle touch. I am sorry, truly.
very void weapon you smoke. That was the one who leads them. And that is all there is for now. Thanks for watching. Also, uh, check out other videos from Sabbath Grand Philippines and subscribe. See you on my next vid. Peace out, y'all. Yeah.